Hi, I'm Lace and this is another Princess Connect video. Today's video will be a little bit less focused because it's a bunch of tips that I personally think are quite useful. It's the 25th of December here, so I'd like to wish you all a Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays, whichever you prefer. And so without further ado, I guess let's just get on with it before I keep rambling on with my excuses. Number one, click on your character's portrait in the Enhanced Characters screen to access their details. So this one is really useful to compare uh, like the stats of different characters, but the most useful thing for me for this one is to actually be able to look at the equipment for future ranks. So if you go into this rank details one, you'll actually be able to see the equipment that Makoto is needing for rank seven. This is 100% going to help you with planning which stage to farm. So for example, I thought I was done with emerald earrings, but nope. The Lion's King's Grace, this one, it actually needs another five of the emerald earrings. So, so now I'm begging my clan for them. Number two, pay attention to the wording of the skills. For example, and using Nozomi as an example, if I click into live on stage, this says taunt all enemies. That means all enemies in the enemy party, which I know it sounds intuitive, but there are some that are a little bit less, less obvious. This one here, boost all allies physical attack. So this means all of them. However, if we look at idols encouragement, we've got recover HP of all nearby allies by a small amount. What does nearby allies mean? So nearby allies for Nozomi's heal is actually 200 range around her. And again, this is not immediately obvious. If you want to check the specific specifications of their skills, hop on over to one of the wikis and they will tell you exactly how it's calculated. Another one, for example, uh, Glamorous Slice deals 465 damage to enemies in range. In range for Nozomi means in front of her and 280 range which is not specified here. So sometimes you have other ranged characters like Shiori who deals damage to up to three enemies directly in front, right? But if they're not in the range, it's not gonna hit them. Number three, wait until the max rank before you slam your refinements. So my Makoto is still rank six. If I refine anything like this guy here, I'll actually lose the refinements when we rank up. So if I have a look at my Shiori instead, you'll see that she's rank seven. If I click on the character portrait, rank details, this is the current maximum rank. So it seems like this is gonna be the cap for a while. So I would not hesitate to slam refines on all of these equips because she's gonna be sitting at rank seven for a while, at least a month until maybe release or something. However, when you do rank up, Yes, you do lose these stars, but you are actually refunded half of your refinement points, but none of the mana that you spent refining it. So if I click refine here, you see it actually is going to cost mana if I try to refine it. This does not get refunded, but half of what you spend in refinement points does get refunded. With that being said though, don't be stingy because the further you push in the story, the more opportunities you actually have to be stamina efficient. Number four, not all refinements are the same. Using Makoto as an example, for 30 refinement points, I could I could refine her Garnet Shield, which gives me 97 HP, three attack, two physical defense. I could refine heavy metal armor instead, which is gonna give 127 HP, six physical attack, blah, 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 blah right? Or I could also do the Moonlight Sword or probably a bunch of HP and a bunch of physical attack. And if you're trying to make a decision like this, you're likely struggling with a particular stage, right? Like I said before, if you're struggling really hard on a stage, maybe you just need to hit one or two refinements to get over it and start farming it. So in this scenario, ask yourself, is your Makoto getting hit too hard? Are they not doing enough damage or what? In the scenario that your team is lacking damage, you would up the Moonlight Sword. For me personally, in one of the recent stages, my Makoto kept walking up to the th front and was just asking to get hit. And spoiler, she did get hit and kept dying. And when she died, everything just kept falling apart. So what this actually made me do was refine the heavy metal armor like a couple of times for the last rank. And this kind of leads me to my next point. Number five, there is actually a pattern in equipment. I'm sure you've noticed it by now, but the character's best weapon is in the top left slot. And usually the best weapon from the last rank is actually in the top right hand spot. Though this is not always the case. So to prove that, let me click into here. Let me have a look at rank details. You can see that this is the best weapon, which isn't released yet. And this is the next best weapon from last rank, which is the uh, the butterfly katana that I'm actually trying to farm for right here. So this guy will actually move across over there. The best armor piece is typically under the best weapon, which is down here. And sometimes actually requires the previous best armor piece to craft it. So if I look in here, well, this one doesn't use it. But if I instead have a look at Yukari's, you can actually see that I need a couple of other ingredients that were from the previous rank. Now, what does this all mean? It means this, you're gonna need to farm that weapon or armor again. So sometimes stages that you thought dropped only one piece of the equipment that you needed 
actually drop two. Instead of memorizing them all, you'll, you'll start learning to check for them so you can do better planning and be just more stamina efficient generally. And when it comes to refinement, if you refine the top left hand corner weapon, the best one, as opposed to the top right hand corner, you're going to get more stats. So for example, when I refined the Thunder Katana, I actually got 25 HP and 30 physical attack. If I had instead done the Moonlight Sword, I would get 22 HP and 20 physical attack. Number six, consider refining a character to force divine amulet drops from the gacha. This is more training towards a mid late game tactic. So after you've gotten what you need from the shop or the hard mode farming, you could actually consider farming for new characters to farm divine amulets. So you get divine amulets by getting a duplicate character from the gacha. So what if you instead farm the shards for that character and then made that character first? Then any subsequent dupes you get actually gets turned into divine amulets. So so for example, if I created Reno from farming Arena and then I successfully made her, any subsequent copies will be converted into Divine Amulets. One of the greatest uses of Divine Amulets is to actually boost the stars of limited characters because you can't farm the Prefez characters, you can't farm the Summer characters, you can't farm for you can't farm for the limited characters. I just kind of repeated myself, I'm sorry. So in practice, what this means is if you're going for say Dungeon, you would get your Yukari to 2 star first because that's critical and then your Nozomi 3 star and then from there you actually have a choice to make, right? You could actually keep going with Yukari, you could keep going with Nozomi. I'm personally actually going to go for Maho, so I actually bought her out today here. And this is not only because she's a great support and TP battery, but this also ensures that if I get any dupes of her, it will be converted into Divine Amulets, which I will use for the limited characters I pull. Number seven, don't forget to take out your furniture from your storage after you completely clear a dungeon. So pretty self-explanatory, but not immediately obvious. When you finish a dungeon, you actually get a stamina regenerating furniture. So you see here, it produces 12 stamina every six hours. But this is actually sitting in your storage, which is over here, until you place it down. So place it down and get more stamina, simple. So just by having the first two, I'm actually getting an extra 96 stamina a day. With the third one, it would actually be a full gem refresh almost, for free. Number eight, don't forget about your clan supports as they will make you some money and help you clear dungeons. So as you can see, I've got Yukari and Yui here supporting the dungeon. So they actually generate mana for you depending on how long they've been there. So there's a time elapsed and how many times they've been used. Despite not having been used like ever, my previous two characters, Makoto and Nozomi, actually generated 200k mana over 2.5 days. So you can actually also collect the mana anytime by ending the support and just reposting them. There's actually no restrictions to assigning them. It's great rainy day fun. So for the dungeon itself, don't forget that you can get your ass carried by a clan member. So I'm personally looking at the two tank three healer strat. So I'm gonna be eyeing this 59 chicka. So that brings me to the end of the video again. If you've made it here, I would appreciate if you could drop the comment Arena rankings are a social construct. This will kind of help me see how many people actually make it to the end of the video because my analytics are saying not many are. <laughs> Regardless, I hope you learned something. And if you found this video helpful or enjoyable, please consider leaving a like or a comment or a subscribe or all of them. It really goes a long way. Otherwise, again, I appreciate you for watching. Happy holidays and take care of yourselves. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.